is a lot of oil for just the boat to be sitting around. I'm Matt with Marine Tech and uh, today we're going to be working on the trim cylinders on our uh, 2004 Yamaha F225. These are again 20 year old motors and they sat for a while before we got them and expected to have little little things like this go wrong. Came into the office on uh, Monday morning and walked back here and saw a big puddle of oil on the floor. And that is a lot of oil for just the boat to be sitting around. And uh, upon further investigation, we've got a, a leaky trim cylinder. I know where to find some tools. Uh, this will be the AMT-004. And we sell the seal kits. Uh, I think this is a K1022. Don't, don't hold me to that. We'll uh, get you the right number in the video. All right, I've got the uh, flathead adapter from our impact hammer and uh, should be able to get in there with that and have some good leverage on it. I just heard all the pressure get relieved on the sh our cylinders. And I'm able to push that in, so. We have our manual re relief open. All right, so we've got the um, AMT0004 on a half inch breaker bar and this, um, fit into our cap for removal and while you're doing this you really want to you have to make sure that the wrench stays all the way engaged into the in the cap it will try to buy uh, twist out so hold it in place and it's gonna take a lot of force these have been on here for a long time I need a breaker bar for my breaker bar. All right, I uh, got a piece of pipe. Wrenches all the way in there. Held in place, push down. And there we go. Busted it loose. I didn't get the other side broken loose. It's gonna need a breaker bar also. And it's loose. I've done a lot of testing to get these pins strong enough to be able to remove these caps after sitting for 20 years. It's not a not an easy task for a little four millimeter pin. Probably should have removed our fill cap uh, before we started this process. It's a uh, 17 millimeter. Wasn't on there too tight thankfully. Um, Go ahead and pull out this whole cylinder and it's going to make a mess as I do. Slowly in control and in control. All right. Take it to the workbench and I'll pull out the other one. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and suck out um, the rest of the old fluid. This thing, uh, you know, it's 20 years old and there might be some moisture in there. I just want to start fresh. Hope to not have to ever open this up again. We got our big vacuum sucker. All right, that was easy. All right, so we've got our parts um, for our, our rebuild. We've got the cap just slides right off from the uh, the rod, and we've got a spring clip we need to remove and then the seal, and then another seal on, on the outside. And then on the rod, we have uh, an O-ring and then a backing washer. We've got to remove those. All right, so start by removing our spring clip. Uh, this can be a challenge, and it likes to go flying across the, the warehouse or work. So be careful. All right, that was easier than expected. Next, we're going to remove our seal, uh, careful, being careful not to damage the outer sealing surface of our cap. Let's see if this will come out. Nope. Just do a little persuasion. Careful not to scratch the edge of the, the outer edge. All right, it's budging. 
And we got it. Get this other O-ring off. So we got our seal out. Really didn't want to budge. Everything looks all right in here. We'll clean it up with some um, brake cleaner before we reassemble. Overall, the cap looks pretty good for being um, 20 years old and I'm comfortable reusing it. Right, so we're gonna install our uh, upper seal in the trim cap. And this seal is installed with the flat side up. Uh, this concave side goes down. So we're gonna push it in like this. Um, this cap got a little bit of junk in here. See if I can clean this out with some 2000 grit sandpaper. All right, it's mostly cleaned out. We're gonna go ahead and put our new seal in. Started by hand, nice and flat. These are 13 16 washer, only pushing on the outside of the seal, outside diameter of the seal. Pushing that all the way down till it's flush. It doesn't wanna go, just uses some very gentle persuasion. All right, so our new seal is all the way in and past where our snap ring goes. So we'll install our snap ring now. Pretty easy. This pops right in. I'll put our seal on the outer. And the bigger of the two goes on the, on the cap. It's outside of the cap. All right. Now we remove our O-ring and backing washer on the rod, trim rod. Again, these have a split in them. If you just find that, it'll open up right, open up and come right off. Backing washer. And our new O-ring. All right, so our O-ring and our backing washer is on, and our cap. Well, let's inspect the rod. We do have a nick in the rod. I wonder, um, it's actually a pretty substantial nick right here. You can feel it with your, your finger. We've got some emery cloth. I'm gonna try sanding it down. Okay, so this burr in the, in the rod will leak fluid any any time it goes past the seal it's gonna leak fluid and it also has the, the chance to to cut or nick the seal and cause it to leak which is probably what happened so i took some 2000 grit sandpaper and sanded it down uh, it's smooth now well mostly smooth i'll sand it just a little bit more and that hopefully uh, won't get caught on our our seal as this slides back and forth. So I don't feel any kind of resistance or it, it hanging up, but um, again, it will over time damage our seal. Feels good. And we're gonna head over back, head back over to the boat and install these. All right, before I go and put the pistons in, I'm just gonna go ahead and top up the cylinders. Looking at them. I don't see a bunch of pitting uh, or any corrosion that's really going to damage our, our seals. So, Doing this now will make bleeding all the air out of the system later a lot easier. And I just want to go up to the bottom of the threads. So that's uh, approximately 10 ounces of fluid fills those up. Let's put a little bit of Fluid on our O-ring, help uh, all that install. Once you go hand tight, it's time to start using the wrench. Just get it all the way down and then we'll tighten the other cylinder up and we'll torque them both at the same time. All right, they're both down hand tight. Go ahead and Snug them up. All 
All right, so they're both on and snug. And we're gonna go ahead and fill up our reservoir. All right, now I'm gonna close our manual relief screw because we filled it a little bit. Being sure to keep this even and smooth. Uh, we do not want to strip out this flathead screw. All right, so we've got our manual relief screw uh, all the way back in, and we're just gonna trim the motor up until we hear the, the motor bind. All right, that sounded like a good bind to me. I'm gonna see if I can get any more fluid in here right now. All right, it is completely full. Now I'm going to put the reservoir cap on the motor which is what I did not do last time, and it spewed everything out. And we don't want to over tighten it. This needs to be snug, it has no ring on it. Um, now I'm going to manually open the, open the manual valve, and we're gonna slowly let it come down. Again, slowly open this so we don't bang on our cylinders. down and I think you heard all that air get squished out now we're gonna go ahead and put that manual re relief back in and we should be able to trim it all the way out and here we go so we've just completed our um, replacement of our trim caps so now we're not going to come into work uh, tomorrow morning and have another giant puddle of oil on the ground. Hope you enjoyed. Sounded like I heard some air moving around in there. We'll just trim it up and down a few times, make sure we get all the air out of the system.